Hi, I'd like to welcome you to MOTC Training, Ministry Outreach Training Center. My name is I'm Ollie Brown, and I will be your instructor for the next hour as we study resting in the Lord. Let's go before the Father in prayer. Father, we come before you in the name of Jesus, give you glory and praise and thanksgiving for your word. Your word is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path, and we thank you, Father God, for the word going forward. We thank you, Father God, that we'll be doers of that word and not just a hearers only. And Father, we give you all the praise and all the glory and all the thanksgiving in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. So we're going to be, this is my second hour on teaching, uh, resting in the Lord. Resting in the Lord is a choice. We're going to do a, a, a little review and then we're going to continue. You know, when we, when we get in a relationship with the Lord, we have to uh, we, uh, decide in our own hearts whether we're going to rest in the Lord or not. It's, a, it's, it, it, it's always an uh, um, idea for us to just say relax. Relax and know that God is on your side. God is for us. If God is for us, who can be against us? See, when you want to get the intimate relationship with God, that's the whole point. You're not going to trust somebody you don't know. You're not going to run to nobody you don't know. So the most important part is getting a relationship with the Lord Jesus. Restraint, commune with God. So that you know in your heart of hearts that he is your only hope. The earnest expectation of good. There's nobody else going to do you like, we used to hear that song all the time, there's nobody going to do you like Jesus. Well, that's true. There's nobody going to do you like Jesus. We, we do all this by faith. So when we rest in the Lord, he tells us to come to, come to him who all, who all are heavy laden and burdened down. He said, come to me, come to me, I'll give you rest. So our thing is we rely and depend and trust him. And we know that he's our, our source. He alone. He's alone as our place of uh, safety. He alone is our place of rescue. He's a, he alone is our refuge. And then we, we were going to know with Psalms 91 last, uh, last time. And so I'd like you to read uh, all of Psalms 91 from the beginning to the end. Because it would really truly bless you and remind you how great our God is. He told us no matter what goes on in this world. You see this world, he tells us that, that uh, uh, the world is evil continuously. You listen to the news and you all get these evil reports all the time of what's going on. And all you're going to do is get fear and discouragement from listening to the news. I mean, you might get a little percentage of some information that you might need. But most of the stuff, that repeats itself over and over and over again. So you can develop fear. You can be intimidated. You can be manipulated. You can be uh, 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 discouraged. So no matter what goes on in life, in the midnight hour, what goes on in the daytime, you have to realize and understand and know for sure in your heart that God is for you. And God, as he says in Psalms 91.5, you shall not be afraid of the terror by night or the sudden attack during the day or the plague that strike in the dark or the evil that kills in daylight. Because you have made him your dwelling place, angels are watching over you. And I want to ask you the question today, how many of you have put your angels out? Did you give your angels assignment this morning? Did you give the angels assignment today? Have you given the angels assignment this week, this month, this year? They're, they're hearkening to the voice of God's word. They listen to the, and we are the voice of God's word. We're the ones that's uh, saying what the word of God says. So if you don't put the angels out to work, the angels are standing by looking at you, waiting for the, waiting for the, uh, the word of God to come out your mouth. And so, uh, 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 our whole thing is to remember the Holy Spirit is a good, he always reminds us what the word of God says. But you remember what the word of God says about our angels. Did I put my angels out today? No, I did not. So I'm talking to myself. I didn't, I do put them out, but I didn't, I didn't give them assignment today. But so, so therefore we, we want to make sure that we use all the resources of God's word. Because God's word is for everlasting to everlasting. He says over in, um, Luke 14, for his written, he shall give his angel charge over you to keep you. And in, in their hand, they shall bear you up, at least at any time you dash your foot against a stone. So God says, I've given you, I give you my word, I've given you my name, I give you my angel, I give you all things pertaining to life and godliness for us to learn to trust him. And then he also told us in Matthew 11, 28, he said, come to me, all who are tired from carrying heavy loads, and I will give you rest. For the first thing, we're not supposed to be carrying the heavy loads. So when the loads come up, we're supposed to cast those loads on him. He said, well, if you have them, if you're carrying the heavy loads, uh, 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 give them, well, I will give you rest. Take my yoke and learn of, of me. For I'm meek and lonely in heart, and you shall find rest for your soul, your mind, your will, and your motion. 
Your emotion will tell you so so uh, stressed out if you let your if you depend on your emotions to guide you, or you or you are um, led by emotions. Emotions are not to be trusted. Your emotions are not because see, I can wake up in the morning happy. I can be a happy camper in the morning. Then even hear even report, but don't maybe maybe I don't have to hear your report. Just a thought, suggestion, idea coming from the enemy about who said something or something happened way five years ago, ten years ago, twenty years ago. Some little thought, and you don't cast down imagination. And that hip, and, and, and that thought, you begin to meditate on it, and then you get start getting mad or sad or start being moved by your emotions. So we're not going to be moved by our emotions. What are we supposed to be moved by? What are we supposed to live by? The word, amen, the word. That's what, that's what we're supposed to live by. Jesus said over in 1 John, the word said over in 1 John 2, 6, those who claim to rest in him ought to walk himself as that one walk, as Jesus walked. So he said meditate on the word day and night. If you meditate on the word day and night, you should observe it and do all according to what is written. And then you will have, you will have good success. There's such thing as bad success. A lot of people have bad success. Because of people people being successful out there in society, you see they got all the all the toys. And you think they are happy, but there are a lot of people with all the hookups. They got they got they got everything you can think that make people happy, but that don't make people happy. Money won't make you happy. Stuff don't make you happy. Rings don't make you happy. Diamonds don't make you happy. Do I, uh, uh, Paul said, I think myself happy. And what do I think on? I think on the goodness of my God. That's what I think on. I think I think myself happy. So happiness is, is, is a choice. Jesus, I came for your joy to be full. I came for your joy to be full. So when we're resting in the Lord, we have full joy. So there's not enough people resting. Uh, uh, people are weary and people are tired and people are stressed out and people distressed and all kinds of things going on. When you talk to people now, they don't have time. They, they, they're rushing around and running. But God said that when you get so tired in your natural body, you get so tired in your mind, you, you make some bad decisions. You make some bad decisions. You don't, I mean, you don't always, because you become double-minded, you're not sure. Your confidence is not in God. Your confidence is not in word. See, our hope is supposed to be in the word of God. I, our earnest expectation of good is always supposed to be in the word of God. It's always supposed to be in God. See, we don't put our trust in no man. We don't put our confidence in man because man will flip over. He'll, he, 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 he's something to change his mind in the middle of a sentence. So we don't trust that. And we, and we don't want to be a double-minded man because we understand that a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. Let that, let that man not receive anything of the Lord. Not that God won't give it to him, but if he's got a man of two minds, he's not going to receive it because he's, he's, he's uh, confused in his mind, uncertain about everything, and he thinks filled with his side. So he's led by his, mostly by his emotions. So God tells us, uh, he tells us, and he tells us again, come to me all who are tired and weary and heavy burden, and I will give you rest. So who going to give you rest? Jesus said, I'll give you rest. Where are you going to look for your rest from? You're going to look for the rest from him because he said, I'll give you rest. If you allow me to lead you, if you allow me to guide you, you allow, you follow my instructions, I'll, the rest is there for you. He said, and see, I want to ask you today, are you a Martha or Mary? Martha, are you Martha or Mary? Sometimes I'll be a Martha and sometimes I'm Mary. See, Mary, Mary understood a whole lot of things. She wanted to get the word of God. She wanted to sit before God and listen to him. Listen. Faith come by hearing and by hearing the word of God. And God wants to listen. Not only listen on Sunday to his word, not only, but see, if faith come by hearing and hear by hearing the word of God, would you think we're we supposed to be doing what? Hearing. Getting them tapes. And listen to them over and over. And I guarantee you, you can listen to the tape 45 times. And then number 46 times, you go, whoa, I didn't know that. I, I just, that's good. But you heard it 45. All of a sudden, because it's always, it's always alive. It's always pregnant. It's always putting forward. So that's why we have to put that new man on, made in the image and likeness of God. We got to put him on. We, we already been made in the newness and likeness of God, but we got to put him on according to the word of God. Ephesians 4.20, it says, but you have not so learned Christ. If Christ told us to learn of him, he said, if you indeed, if indeed you have heard him and was taught by him as, as indeed, as, as the truth is in him, in Jesus, for you all to put off the old man. So if you learned of him and the truth is in Jesus, he said, I am the truth. My word is truth. I came to bring back the truth. So if you put him on if you put, and the truth is in him, for you all to be put, put off that old man according to the, uh, your ways of living before. 
who is corrupt according to the deceitful lust, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind. And you should be put on a new man who is according to, to God was created in righteousness and true holiness. We got to put him on. And we just can't put him on one time. We got we to gotta walk in this word. We got to live in this word. We got to rest in this word. See, it's one thing to know the word. And another thing to rest in the word. See, we can know what the word says, but when you when when the midnight hour and the enemy comes in like a flood to see who we can devour, who uh, what you gonna do then? What am I gonna do then? And if you if you can if he devours anybody, is a person who's not resting in the Lord. That's one of the ones he's gonna devour. And if you're not resting in the Lord, because if you're weary and well doing it, and you're distressed and you're going on and on and on and on, and you can always tell where you are by what comes out your mouth, what you're saying, who you're saying it to. That's why God told us in 2 Timothy 2:15. He says, "Study to be eager to you do your utmost to present yourself to God, approved, test by tested by trial." A workman who has no cause to be ashamed, correctly analyzing, accurately dividing, rightly handling, and skillfully teaching the word of truth. See, so when we get that word of truth in us, and knowing that when the enemy comes in like a flood to see what it devour, I know because I have the word of truth, I know I'm going to run to the word, and I'm going to run in the rest of the Lord. Because what did God say about that? What did God say? See, I'm not going to try to fix it. See, back in the day, I was one of them people that always try to fix stuff. I don't know about you, this is me. I try to fix it. And then I get frustrated when I did everything I know to do to try to fix stuff. But you can't, see, my, I, my trust is in God. My trust is God. He said in Romans 12, 2, he said, Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind in order to prove by, by, by you what is a good and pleasing and perfect will of God is. We got to prove this by for ourselves. I got to, you know, go into this metamorphosis. That's when you go in that, that place of holy habitation and that and intimacy. When you, when you go in that word like a cocoon, you wrap yourself in that word of God. You wrap up tight. And you get that word and digest that word and eat that word and eat that word and get it all on the inside of you. So when the enemy comes in like a flood out of the abundance of your heart, your mouth going to speak what the, word, what the will of God says, what the word of God says. You want to, you're not going to be confused. You're not going to be double-minded because you're going, you have a sure foundation in the truth of God's word because you trust God. You believe God. And you, you're not going to be moved by what you see or think or feel. You're not going to look at the scene because the scene is temporal. But you're going to look at God's word because God's word is eternal. So when we, get, we, get, or when we start trusting in the Lord and relying and depending on him, we're going to have to know something. We're going to know that he is. And we're going to have to understand this. He's, he's finished. He says finished. Me, he says, uh, 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 by resting in Jesus, you are uh, uh, effective acting in faith. Trusting that God will ensure that will ensure that everything works out in your favor. Because God has given us favor today. We don't have to be moved by fear or moved by depression or moved by any of those things. But God, God has given us, He's given us favor. He said, Come boldly to the throne of grace. That you may obtain grace and mercy in time of need. So we have favor in the in the kingdom of God. So no matter what goes on, how I feel, or what I think. I'm going to trust in the Lord because I cast all my cares upon him. Cast all my anxiety, all my frustration on him. For he cares for us. He told us in 1 Peter 5, 7. He said, cast all your anxiety onto him. For he cares for you. Be sensible and valiant because your adversary, the devil, walks around like a roaring lion seeking someone to he might devour. Well, I tell you the one he is devouring, the one that don't know the truth. He does devour that. He it will devour, devour you if you're not resting in the Lord. If you're confusing your mind, if you're if you're sad and, and messed up and, and and stressed out and distressed and all that stuff, and you're not resting in the Lord, he can devour you because he, see, like like in uh, in the only uh, uh, animal shows, and I like to watch the animal shows. I'm always watching the animal shows because they fascinate me, and uh, but they all eat each other and they all have a good time doing it, and I'll be looking at that and I'm going. The ones they running after and chasing after, they ain't not chasing after and running after the ones that run strong and, and they got a focus and a purpose. They they be the stragglers, the old ones, the weak ones, the weak the ones that got distracted from the herd, got distracted, won't go to, won't come in and commune on Sunday. One got distracted, 
and they go and they all they all doing what they're not supposed to do, and that's the one going down. And that's the same thing would happen when you didn't fire the ones that's not resting and not 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 clinging and hugging and getting close to God's word and not studying to show themselves approved and not meditating day and night and not not walking in love and all those things God told us to do and he they fall to the wayside and you see them lines coming down and they, they, they don't take long he's gone and this line may not have no teeth but he's gumming them to death amen so I'm telling you now don't be that one to devour because you, you rest to my hope is not in man, what man can do for me. My hope is not in money. My hope is not in a in my children. My hope is not in, in, in anything. My hope is not in a husband. My hope is not in a friend. My hope is not even in the, my church family. My hope is in the Lord. My honest expectation of good, honest expectation, because I know that I know. See, I watch my God. I watch him in my life. See, everybody's supposed to have a testimony. When the enemy comes in like a flood, when things start messing up, you should run to your testimony. You should run because God has already given us, blessed us, and delivered us. And we are blessed people. And he hasn't changed. He's the same God yesterday and the day and forever. He's, he hasn't changed. He's our change is not. I'm the same yesterday and the day and forever. And it's not a shadow turning in me. So he delivered me out of the muck and the mire of this life. And, he, and I overcome so many, many things in my life. Why is he going to Why is he gonna forsake me now? He's not. And we're not going to allow our minds, our hearts to be troubled. I refuse to worry about anything. I will not let my heart be troubled. I, God, oh, oh, let's turn to John 14, 1. And Jesus is talking. And Jesus says, let not your heart be troubled. Trust in God and trust in me also. In my father's house are many mansions. If it was not so, I would have told you. I go prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again to receive you to myself. So where that word I am, you may be also. And where I go, you know, and you know the way. And Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you go. And how can we know the way? And Jesus said, I am the way. Hey, I am the way. There is no other way. I am the way. I am the way out of sickness and disease. I am the way out of poverty. I am the way out of hurt. I am the way. And I'm the truth and the life. And no one comes to the Father but by me. And if you had known me, you should have known my Father also. And from now on, you know him and have seen him. And Philip said to him, Lord, show the Father and it will be enough. It will suffice us. It will satisfy what is going to satisfy you? What's, how are you going to be satisfied? Because he tells us, he said, let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. So what is, what, what is bothering you that Jesus is not enough? What is Jesus plus any? It's not Jesus plus anything. It's Jesus, Jesus, and Jesus alone. It's not, I, it's not a Jesus and plus I, my diet. Jesus and plus my pill. Jesus and plus this and Jesus and plus. It's not a plus. It's Jesus and Jesus alone. He don't really need no help. He said, I am that I am. I am God. So Jesus told us, he said, uh, look, I'm leaving here now. I'm, I'm leaving here. And I'm going to leave you the Holy Spirit. Oh, in John 14, 27, I'm going to leave you the Holy Spirit. So I'm going to need some help. Don't let your heart be troubled. I'm going. If I don't go, the Holy Spirit can't come. But I'm going to let you know right now, my peace. I'm going to leave you something else besides, besides just leaving. My word, I'm going to leave everything. You got an inheritance. He says, peace I leave you, I leave with you. My own shalom, a peace I give and bequeath to you. Not the world do I give to you. Not the world, not as the world gives do I give to you. Do not let your heart be troubled. Do not. Neither let it be afraid. Stop allowing yourself to be agitated, disturbed, and do not permit yourself to be fearful, intimidated, and cowardly, unsettled. He said, look, I'm going to give you something. I'm going to give you my peace. And in my peace is everything. My shalom. Nothing missing, nothing broken. Restore relationship, health, healing, wealth, prosperity, all of it. He said, now I'm going to give you, you have the power to speak to the circumstances. You have the power and authority to declare and decree a thing. I've told you can speak to your circumstances and not die in your heart, but believe those things you say, and you will have whatsoever you say. What are you saying, church? Because we have, a, God has given us everything we need to live an overcoming victorious life. 
everything he's given us his word, we're supposed, to, we're supposed to take authority over the enemy, not run from him. We're not supposed to run from the enemy. We're supposed to run toward him. Hey, you got some more? Come on, come on, come on with it. Come on, you bad. But God has given me everything I need to overcome the works of the enemy. So why are you burdened? And last time we talked about some of the burdens. The less what the Lord dealt me about rest. I got uh, uh, the things that stop your rest. Everybody, God given an assignment to do a certain thing. Some of the things that uh, uh, stop you from uh, obstacles to prevent you from entering into God's rest is anger, anxiety, unbelief, unforgiveness, feeling unworthy, fear, worry, and discouragement. We went over some of these last time about uh, things, the hindrance to, to uh, 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 entering into his rest. Because he told us in Hebrews uh, 4.11, therefore let us labor to enter into his rest. At least anyone falls after the same example of, of the children of Israel, unbelief. We got to labor. We got to labor. We got to work. Because, see, if you don't realize, sometimes you be, you're be you not resting in the Lord. You don't even realize you're not resting in the Lord. Then all of a sudden, you, you, you're all upset about something, and you and it just nag at you, nag at you, nag at you. You go to bed, it's nagging at you. You wake up in the morning, it's still nagging at you. And, you, and you, if you don't talk about it, you're thinking about it. You might not even mention it to another soul, but you're talking to yourself. The whole time in the arena of your mind, in the arena of your soul, you're talking to yourself. The children of Israel in the promised land, God has gave us. See, we had a better promise. We got better prom, uh, 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 better covenant based on better co uh, promises than the children of Israel. God took care of the children of Israel in the wilderness. God led them by going before them in the pillar of the clouds. Preventing the scorching sun from striking them down, down, and the people were, uh, were shaded and kept cool. And then at night, when the desert became dark and cold, God gave him, his people the pillar of fire to light the way for them as well as, as to keep them warm and safe. Today, we are as we walk with God, we will not be overwhelmed by the cold, dark place in life because God's word already said we are more than conquerors through him that love us. We are victorious. We have all things. We, we can do all things through him that's true to us. We don't have to, we have the power over the works of the enemy. So he said, he said, want his people to enter into his rest. Don't have to worry about, the children of Israel didn't have to worry about uh, 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 food. God had, God had uh, 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 manna. They had to, uh, to worry about tomorrow because when tomorrow came, they had fresh manna. Feeding, uh, feeding them manna every day for 40 years. He pissed people have lack, had no lack. Just like we don't have no lack today. He they had no lack. He, I mean, he, uh, when they wanted meat, he rained quails on them. They had to only pick, just, pick, just go down and pick the quails up. And they still mumbered and they still complained. And they still was wishing they was back in Egypt making bricks out with, with our straw. What did, God, what, what did God have to do to make us satisfied? He said, if you're hungry and thirst after righteousness, you shall be satisfied. You shall be full, filled. If you're hungry and thirst after him, if you desire to sense the middle of the word and walk with it. See, this is part of us where we get in the word of God and say, okay, Lord, I'm going to do it your way. I, 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 I thank you, Father, for the favor. I thank you for the faithfulness. See, because it's not our faith. It's God's faithfulness where we will be looking at. God, God, God is a faithful God. They could not believe that God had given them a land full of richness to enjoy a land which just flowed with his goodness. And we have a land flowing with his goodness today. In the kingdom of God. We're in this, we're in this world, but not of this world. We, we're in the kingdom of God. And the king, Jesus, is good. I said the king, Jesus, is good. There's none like him. He's great and greater to be praised. So God wants to stop struggling and start resting and believing his grace toward us. He got grace toward us. The only work is to enter his rest. We are to labor every day to enter his rest. God says, God, uh, God told us in Isaiah 40, 31. He said, but they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength, and they shall mount up with wings as eagles, and they shall run and not be weary, and they shall walk and not faint, not give up, quit, or not fall out of faint. Those that wait on the Lord, wait on the Lord. He said, "Don't don't be don't be don't be uh, 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 weary and well doing because in due season you are gonna reap the harvest if you don't give up quit or faint. In due season, 
Because that's where my hope is. My hope is in that due season. My hope is in the goodness of God. My hope is in his word. He said, if he said in due season, that's where he said that in his word is absolute. If he said it is so. He said, don't, 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 don't be angry. Don't be fearful. The one of the obstacles is fear. We talked about it briefly last time. A fear is a painful emotion or passion excited by the expected expectation of evil, of apprehension of impending danger. People are looking out for it. They're looking out for it. They're thinking about it. They're meditating on it. They, they, they so afraid, and God says, God says in Isaiah 41, 10, he said, do not fear, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will make you strong. Yes, I will help you. Yes, I will uphold you with my right hand of my righteousness. So he says, don't, don't be afraid. He said, I got you. I got you. Don't be afraid. And so when he told us also in Psalm 21, 1, he said, the Lord is my comfort, my light. And my salvation, I will, not, I will fear no one. The Lord protects me from all danger. I will never be afraid. When the evil people attack me and try to kill me, they stumble and fall. Even if a whole army surround me, I will not be afraid. If, even if the enemy attack me, I will still trust the Lord. God is on my side. What man, what man shall I fear? God is for me. If God is for you, who, church, who could be against you? So stop worrying. And you know, when you worry, you can identify your worry. Because you, what's coming out your mouth when you worry? If the word of God is not coming out your mouth, and you talk, and you leaning and talking about the circumstances, you worry. He said, don't ever worry saying, over in Matthew 6, 31. Don't ever worry saying. What are we going to eat or what are we going to drink or what are we going to wear? Everyone is concerned about these things and your Heavenly Father certainly knows you need of them. But seek first the kingdom of God, his righteousness, and all these things shall be added to you. Over in uh, uh, Matthew 6, 26, when I was reading this script, it says, Look at the birds. They neither plant harvest or gather the harvest into the barns. Yet your Heavenly Father feed them Aren't you worth more than they? Than they? Well, I had some apple trees. I had a lot of apples on them. And I thought about the apple tree when I was reading that scripture. Whatever was attacking my apple tree didn't plant the apple tree. It didn't water the apple tree. They didn't even have to go out there and put them up the tree. They, did, they did. I went to get an apple. It was so pretty. Red and green, beautiful apple for in my vision. And when I got to the got to the apple to put it on the other half, when I couldn't see the other side, was completely <laughs> devoured. So I thought about this strip. I don't know if it's a possum, a squirrel, or what's going on. It wasn't no bird. It got, it got something out of hands. And I said, they didn't plant this tree. They didn't put no fertilizer tree. And I thought about the scripture. But they they eating and they eating good too. When we was running contests, who can get most apples? I think I won. Praise God. <laughs> so 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 he says, um, uh, six twenty seven. Can any of you had a sin uh, hour to your life by worry? And why worry about clothes? Notice how the flowers grow in the field. They never work to or spin yarn for clothes. No amount of worry can lengthen your life or add anything to your physical person. Word robs you of sleep, health, and many good years. When you are word free, God's anointing flows freely in you, strengthening you, healing you, and restoring. When you when you worry, you are believing the devil has power to make inroads in your life, and God can't protect you. That's what you when you worry. He's saying, God, you can't protect me. I got a word. I got a word about the circumstances and situation because I don't trust you to do what you said you're gonna do. So I'm gonna give you a little help. I'm a word, and worry ain't gonna do nothing but uh, add. <laughs> it's not gonna help you at all. He said, and he said in, uh, 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 he told us in. Um, uh, he said, "Don't be beloved. If you want to want want to have peace and joy, and, and let the Holy Spirit uh, uh, flow inside you, then you must seek every day to be conscious." Of, of, of God's righteousness in Christ Jesus, not your own righteousness. When he told us to seek him first and his righteousness, 
and all things be added to us. Stop, we need to pursue pursue Jesus first. Spend time with him and listen to his word. And when you, when you do these things, you are seeking his kingdom and his righteousness. And all things that you need will shall be added to you. And the word seek, it means to pursue. It means to uh, go after. It means to hunger, to desire, to worship without any label or toil. Any label or toil on our part. Hunger and thirst after him. He says, don't be weary. Don't worry. Philippians 4, 6, it says, um, be, uh, be anxious about, uh, about nothing. Don't be anxious about anything. But in everything, by prayer and by petition with thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God. And the peace of God, which is, surpasses all understanding, will keep your heart and your mind in Jesus Christ. He said, don't worry about nothing. And I, I was uh, um, thinking about testimony. And I was thinking about when we went, when, uh, in 1992, I went to the Bahamas with uh, um, uh, Miles Monroe Ministry. They had a summit over there. And it was, uh, I had never been there before. And um, oh, then we did some praise and worship with Miles Monroe. It was awesome. It was awesome. And that was 1992. And he was still building his church. And that night, the, the hurricane was coming through. And, but we were the last plane was supposed to take off. So we, we got onto the airport. We uh, was five of us in our in the group. And we was all going to the airport. We was looking forward to getting out of out of there because that wind was whipping already. It was it was in the wind was howling and wailing and and, and um so I was a babe, well a newborn, not too long old in the Lord. And time we got to the gate to get ready to go on, they said, up. Oh, it's canceled. Go back to your hotels or rooms. Where you gotta go? Get out. You gotta go back. But we was on a we was on a villa. We had a villa. We was all right on the water. So they let us in this hotel, and we didn't know any better. So we got the high floor. We not supposed to go high. You supposed to go low. But we didn't know. <laughs> we didn't. We said we take we on the fifth floor. Okay, they gave us the fifth floor. And I got out there on the and the wind was high. I don't know if anybody, if you ever been in a hurricane, but I, that was my first praise God and my last. And um, it was hollering and like a, <sighs> it made a noise like it was just, it was, it was a forceless noise. And so I got on the balcony because I, I'm one of them curious type people. <laughs> you know the words for nosy. Anyway, I wanted to see. So I got on the balcony and I was looking at the ocean and the waves was I mean, over like it was overtaking big old suds of waves, and 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 then I mean, it was it was voiceless, and 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 uh, uh, the trees was bent all the way down, and uh, spirit of fear tried to come in. So we got in the room, and we all got in. It was gotten dark, and we all got in the bed, and we start praying. And I start praying, and I remind the Holy Spirit remind me of what God's word said. I said, I said, no weapon formed against us will prosper. We thank you, Father God, for that 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 uh, that you give the angels charge over. We thank you, Father God. No hurt, ha no hurt, harm. That's it. The next thing I knew, tell you the goodness of God. He knocked us completely out. There is no way in the world, in the natural, you can go to you can you can go to sleep in the middle of a hurricane. But God did it. No hurt or and next thing I heard was chip 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 birds. And no one in the Bahamas got killed. That hurricane jumped. In Miami, you remember Hur Hurricane Andrews in 1992? Maybe your babies don't remember that, but 1992 wasn't that far ago. A lot of people probably was gone, and a lot of people died over there. God kept, thank the Lord, he kept it, but the Bible whole thing, in the midst, a piece of path, all understanding, in the midst of a storm, in the middle of that storm, we didn't wait. We didn't wait. Wait till it passed through up all night. I don't know even know how long the storm was. I don't know if it just came through and went poop and it, uh, then how long did it last? I might have to listen to the news. I don't. I still don't know how long it lasts. I know it goes pretty fast, but it's just an idea how good and great our God is in the midst of a storm. And I was reminded of that when I was uh, uh, studying. I said, "Wow, Lord." So I decided to share that with you because it was such an awesome thing to me. It might not be awesome to you, but it was awesome to me because I was in a I was in a hurricane. Amen.
So sometimes when you're in something, it's more, it's more, it's more to you than the person listening to you. But uh, if you ever been in any kind of something like that and knowing that goodness of God, He likes it. He literally knocked not just me out, all of us went to sleep. Because we talked about it. What do you remember? <laughs> Nothing. And so one of the obstacles of um, uh, 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 coming against our rest is discouragement. We live in a world filled with discouraged, discouraged situations. The news is one of the ones that create a lot of discouragement because, you know, if you listen to the news or the radio or any, or people, sometimes you can have people, they won't give you, the, they won't give you what you, you don't catch outside, they'll give it to you. They're going to call you purposely. Did you hear, did you hear, you know, they tell you the, the, uh, all this stuff. Discouraging financial news. Discouraging people, without question, the number one reason that Christians do not ascend to the highest level of spiritual maturity is, is one, of the, one of the reasons, not the number one reason, is, uh, is discouragement. People who are discouraged generally lack confidence in God. Today, many people are easily influenced to detour from the path God wants them to be on because of discouragement. The MIA people, missing in action. Because most of the time it's because of this it's you have the purpose in your heart not to be missing in action. You have the purpose in your heart to to stay hooked up uh, 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 and do what you're supposed to do. Like uh, sometimes my flesh be hollering on Sunday morning, on Friday nights too. <laughs> uh, uh, we haven't missed it. Uh, wow, uh, let's 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 don't go this time. I'm not in condemnation, but. I'm not going, if I decide I don't want to go, I don't want to go. But I'm not going to let that little voice, in, in, uh, whisper thoughts, ideas, and suggestions and persuade me to detour from what I purpose to do. So now what I do when I hear the little, well, shut up. Just shut up. Straight out. In fact, if you don't shut up, I'm, I'm going to go something. I'm going to keep on going. I'm, I'm going, you know, you get, see, devil, he comes with thoughts, ideas, and suggestions to get you off the course of what God has put you on. And I know that this word of God, this, this, this word is life to all my flesh. This word is substance. It sustains me. It sustains me. So I need to hear it all the time. I need it in my ear. I need to, you know, need to hear it. So I, I, I purpose in my heart to come to the house of the Lord so I can hear the word. And not only that, get on the computer. Not only that, get on get the headphones. And get, we got some beautiful, we got some awesome uh, uh, devices. They're not bad. We use them to glorify God. The cable TV, we got the, we got the uh, cell phone, we got the uh, computers. Computers are, are awesome. I got a Bible program on the computer. And I can still, I can go on that computer and I can be on there and look up stuff and go over and, and wow, you can just, you can have a great time just studying God's word. But when people feel disappointment, they are like, they are, uh, they are uh, uh, less likely to Go that route. They are less likely to go into the word of God or, or go with people. When people are disappointed or when people are discouraged, they get sometimes they get sick because they get depressed. They get depressed uh, 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 and they, they start separating themselves from the word of God. They start separating themselves from the God's people. They start leaving and they get in that little corner and they get in that little, uh, see that's what Satan wants to get you in that little corner of uh, self-pity where you can Start beating you upside your head with negativity. Look what they say to you. Look how they treat you. Look what they didn't do for you and all that kind of stuff. But God says, no. He says on Proverbs 3, 5, it says, trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not rely on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will make your path smooth. So stop feeling, uh, stop relying on your own feelings. Stop relying on friends. Stop relying on insight to come up with solutions to your problem. God is my source. So I don't have to worry about nobody else trying to figure. I don't have to. I don't have to try to uh, rely on myself trying to figure out. So we, uh, what I need to. Uh, what can I do? Do I do it? Do I go over here and consolidate the bills? Do I go over here? Do I? What do I do? If your kids are running rapid, pray. Pray. If your bills are running rapid, pray. If, if whatever's going on in your life, seek God. God is the answer. Stop trying to fight the battle with your own strength. The battle is the Lord. He will give you the victory over your fears, hurts, or feeling of discouragement. 
Jesus already told us that all power in, 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 in Matthew 20, 18, he said, all power and authority has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples in all, uh, of all nations. He told us in Luke 10, 19, he said, behold, I give to you authority to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the authority of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. So do we believe that? Do we believe nothing? Nothing going to hurt us? And he saw it in Luke 9, 9, uh, 9 1, he said he called his 12 disciples together and gave them power and authority over all demons and to, and to cure diseases. So God has given us authority. He gave us authority, the power to bind and the power to loose. He gave us the power to touch and agree. He, and he told Joshua, and jo Joshua in 1 8, he said, This book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth, but you shall meditate on it day and night so that you may. Have Observe and do all the corners is written. Then you will make yourself way prosperous. And then you will have good success or shall act wisely. He said one night, John, uh, 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 Joshua 1 9. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid, neither be dismayed. For the Lord your God is with you in all the places you go and wherever you go. And he told Jeremiah 29 11. He said, I know the plan that I have for you, said the Lord. Plans for peace and not for disaster. Plans to give you a future and a hope. A joyous expectation of good. So God got plans. But we got to hook up with the plan. We gotta, and we got to not be afraid of the plan. So I don't know what to do. If you want to do, rest. He's in a good place. Rest. Okay, Lord, I'm resting in you. I trust you. Because in all those testimonies, if you look back and you look back in your life, did, did, did he take you out of the muck and the mud? Did he take me out? Of, did he, where we were, are we not there anymore? Who was that? It was God. And uh, uh, he said, uh, he said, some people seem to be uh, uh, able to uh, um, accept difficulty, difficulties as a challenge. And other people feel overwhelmed. When we become discouraged, we are apt to respond unwisely to, to situations and people. We withdraw, we complain, we blame, we draw, we draw negative conclusions, we quit, or, 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 we, or we do all of the above. And, but God told us, <laughs> lay aside every weight. That's so easy to be set up. Lay them aside. And he said, look unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. Look unto him. In, in, in John 16, 33, he says, I, have I spoken these things to you? I've, I've spoken these things to you that, in, that you might have peace in me. In this world, you shall have tribulation, tests, trials. But be of, of good cheer. I have overcome the world, and I have deprived it of the ability to hurt you. He said, do you believe that? And if you do believe that, rest. Believe that you believe that he's done it all, rest. Rest. He said, I, 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 I want you to rest in me. I want you to believe me. I'm enough for you. And so in, uh, um, these are some uh, people that overcame uh, in Numbers um, 30, 13, 32, um, before that, it said, when Israel heard about the Canaanites were giants and lived in fortified uh, cities equipped with weapons, they lifted their voice and cried, and the people wept that night out of fear. And they lied. They went and lied. Because when God told, Moses told Joshua, they told them the spies to go and go out and spy the land, and 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 Caleb said, "Okay, we, can, we I'm down with this. We can do this. We can we can we can do this. We're able. We we well able to do it." But when the people brought the report back, they they, they brought a report, but out of their own fear, they said uh, in in 1332 they say they begin to spread lies among the Israelis about the land they had explored. They said. The land we explored is, uh, is one that devoured those who live in here. All the people we saw are, are very tall. They, 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 they won't be able to grow anything they saw, or they, they, they don't have enough food to feed the people. They lied. They had more than enough. They had plenty. They would have a land, a land floor with milk and honey. They, it was loaded. And so, Numbers 13:33, and they saw the giant, the son of Anak, and were in their own sights like grasshoppers. And so were, they were like the, the grasshoppers in their own sight. So what do we look like? 
in your sight? What do you see? What do we see? What do you see in your own sight? Okay, you are a king. You are royalty. You are royal. You are kings and priests. Or it's a holy, a holy nation. You're the salt of earth. You are more than conquerors through Him that love you. So, what do you see? Do you see failure, or, 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 or do you do you see victory? How do you see yourself? They saw themselves as grasshoppers in their own sight. They saw themselves as great. They saw themselves as little. And God said you was mighty. God said you you're mighty. You got, so how how do we get to how do we we get to see ourselves as God sees us? We have to renew our mind. We got to get this word on the inside. Numbers fourteen one. Their discouragement came from comparing a difficult situation to their resources instead of God's resources. See, when we compare our our resources. Instead of knowing about God's resources, we're going to have problems. But I want to, I got Nehemiah and I got the rest of them, but I got to get down to David. David encouraged himself in the Lord. And we have to encourage ourselves in the Lord. Sometimes, somewhere about 1220 B.C., David, the anointed king of Israel, was being chased and pursued by the uh, uh the setting king of Israel, King Saul. While he fled from Saul and from the uh, army of Israel, David and some, and some 400 men of Israel, men who had joined themselves to him, fought the enemy of Israel and defeated the southern cities of the village of Israel. And so, the, uh, and so they had, there was day after, there, there, there was a day when after three days of riding, they reached uh, Zingling in their home and found it burning, their family, their wife, and their sons, and their daughters had been taken captive. And David and the people who, who were with him lifted up their voice and wept until they had no more power to weep. And that was Samuel 33 and 4. At this hour, after years of hard life, of a hard life running from Saul and battling the enemies of Israel, in a terrible in that terrible grief, in the sight of the horrif horrifying loss, the men who was with David counseled together to stone him. Now here's a man. Now not only the enemy took everything, now the man gonna come out to David and stone him. Now he, he so he's a he's upset and, 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 and I mean he was at his low, he was at his low point. At this point, at this most desperate hour is when David truly showed forth as a leader of God's people. The Bible tells us that he encouraged himself in the Lord and saw his guidance in prayer. That's it. He saw he saw guidance in prayer. David was about to be stoned by his own men and they were distressed about the loss of their wives and possessions. Dave, David's lowest point came through experience rejection and misunderstanding from those he loved. How many times we, 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 we have got to that point where the ones we love has betrayed us. The ones we love has a, 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 a hurt us, our kids or whatever, our family, different people. But David encouraged himself in the Lord. And David made the best decision that he had made in a long time. He told the priest to bring their emerald, 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 a special vest worn by the high priest when he would require of the Lord. And David didn't say, bring me a sword, or bring me a tranquilizer, or bring me a fifth, or a bottle, or bring me some women, by saying, he said, by saying, bring me the infrared, he was saying, we're going to the Lord with this thing. This thing is bigger than me. They made several decisions before this without seeking God, and they were not good decisions at all. But now he decided, I better seek God. So when we're going through, we got something, seek God in prayer. He said, that's what we need to do. Seek him first, and see, he, he encouraged himself in the Lord. And that's where that our encouragement comes from, in the Lord. We, in, in the Lord, his word. When disaster strikes, people turn to psychiatrists, or they turn to drugs, or alcohol, or food, or illicit, illicit relationships. None of these things are going to solve the problem. They may, be, bring, they may bring temporary relief, but they, not, they will not provide lasting encouragement. You have to encourage yourself in the Lord. The Lord is your source. He's your source. He says, uh, 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 no matter what's going on, don't worry about anything. But in every situation, let God know what you need in prayer and re and, and, and request with while giving thanks. Satan wants to convince you that God don't care, but He cares. 
a Psalm 34, 4. I sought the Lord, and he asked me, and delivered me from all my fears. So we don't, and, and Hebrews 4, 14, it says, Since then, we have a great high priest who has passed into heaven. Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast our profession. For we do not have a high priest who cannot be touched with the flints of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted just as we are, yet without sin. Therefore, let us come boldly to the throne of grace, that we may obtain grace and mercy in time of need. He said, come, come boldly to the throne of grace. Boldly to the throne of grace. To, in Samuel uh, 38, 30 verse 8, the Lord, and the David asked the Lord, Shall I pursue these troops? Will I catch up with them? And the Lord said, Pursue them. The Lord told him, You will certainly catch up with him. So David pursued, and he overcame, and he, he got everything back, all the stuff he got, everything that the king, God said, everything that the worm stole, you will, uh, you, will, you will give it back. So People who are entering into God's rest are supposed to have rest, sleep. Sweet sleep of the righteous. We're supposed to have sweet sleep. Some not staying up all night long, worried about how we're going to fix this thing. Psalms 127.1. Unless the Lord build a house, it says, uh, if the Lord doesn't build a house, the builder only builds shacks. If the Lord doesn't guard the city, the watchman, the night watchman might as well nap. It is usually to rise up early and, and go to bed late and work your weary, your, uh, your weary fingers to the bone. Don't you know he, the Lord, enjoy giving rest to those he loves? He said, so don't be afraid, Proverbs 3, 24, when you lay down, when you lay down, you will not be afraid as you lay there. You will sleep, your sleep will be sweet. Do not be afraid of a sudden terror or the destruction of wicked people when it comes. The Lord will be your confidence. He will keep your foot from getting caught. So you get, you have a good, beautiful rest. And this is one of my one of the verses I really love is Hebrews 13, 5. It says, Let your character or moral disposition be free from love of money, including greed lust and craving for earthly possession and be satisfied with your present circumstances and with what you have. For he, God himself has said, I will not in any way fail you nor give, give up give up or leave you without support. I will not, I will not, I will not in any degree leave you helpless nor forsaken you nor let you down. Relax my hold on you. Certainly not. So that we can make, so that we may boldly say, the Lord is my helper. And I will not afraid, be afraid of what men shall do to me. That's what our source. That's what we rely, rely and depend upon. That's what we come boldly to. That's what we know that he's our God, our portion. He's our all in all, our everything. And there is no shortage in God. There is no shortage in money. There is no shortage of anything in this earth realm. Because God has provided everything. So whatever you're going through. You say, cast that kill on the Lord. Whatever you need, believe, and you receive it. Whatever's going on in your heart, in your household, you know that God is a way maker. He's the one going to get this situation straight now. No matter what it look like and how you feel, if God is on your, if God is on your side, you don't have to fear nothing. So this is going to be the closing of this uh, uh, rest of the Lord, and I hope that you Realize and remember that the battle is not yours, it's the Lord. Now you have the response papers due. Um, and I would like for you to read uh, Psalms 91. I'd like you to read all uh, in its entirety as part of your homework. Read the response papers due. Father, we're going to go before the Father in prayer. And thanksgiving. Father, we just give you praise and thanksgiving for this word going forward this night. We thank you, Father God, for all the hurting hearts, the ones who had problems, the ones who was going through things. They, they went to the other side of it, Lord, and they laid it, it laid it up on you and cast all their cares upon you, Father. And Father, for it's always said and done. We give you the glory and give you the praise and give you the thanksgiving. In Jesus' name, amen. <laughs>